but love someone like me. Give up your life for me, yeah. You even go on and call me your very own. So grateful for your love, your mercy and grace. No one can do the things you do for me. Oh, oh, no one else but you. Everybody say, hey. when the one and the price you paid on that day.
Anna Owusu Akumia, who is going to give us the purpose of today's gathering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening to us all. Provincy, Provincy, Registrar, or Protocol of Death. We are happy to be here today, not because of anything. I've been doing some little survey because I'm the father of the students. And most of the times, you even ask the name of the VC from students and they are not able to tell you. Just the name. So I was just there and I was like, okay, what can we do to help these younger ones have a direct connection with their VC? They've seen all the good works that are going on on campus, but the personal touch is what they've never experienced. So it dawned on me that, okay, let's have a special time with the VC. So the Career Development Unit under my office also came to whisper that this would be a very good thing for us to do. Then with my able uh, boss, I went to him one day, had an interaction with him, and he said, Akumia, you know what? I'm talking about Prof. Hinson, Akumia, you know what? Don't you think it would be good if we let the student meet my boss one day? My boss also has a boss, and that is the VC. So I said, yeah, Prof, it's a good thing. Okay, go back and see what you can do together, and that is what we're experiencing today. So the main idea is to have the VC himself sitting with us, share his life experience with us right from his childhood. And you know that when he entered, I think we played Amachi Dede. Yeah, he will tell you the reason why he likes Amachi Dede today. And that is one of his favorite. In fact, his best song, he will tell you himself, when you play Amachi Dede, wherever he is, he will just get up and dance. So we just want to know some of these things where he picked it from right from his childhood, whether he even had the idea of becoming a full scientist one day, whether he had the idea of becoming a lecturer one day, then we can all learn and pick a career path based on the story that he's going to tell us. So this evening event is just a tete-a-tete -tete discussion with the VC himself, the CEO of GCTU, who through him we are seeing a lot of beautiful things that are happening on campus for him to share his life experience with us. And let me remind you, because we are IT institution, this is streaming live both on Facebook and YouTube as well. So most of the students who are not on campus requested for this. And I just checked, I realized that we are hitting almost 1K people viewing us. So it means that we are rather having more viewers online than even on-site. But the room is filled, and we're going to share, or the VC is going to share his ideas where he started from right from his secondary school days. I, I nearly mentioned his secondary school days. I want him to tell us himself right from where he started, where he, he has got into, and where he even aspired to move. For, For some, some of us, we thought that, oh, he has done it all, so he has finished. But I'm sure that he is still young. He has some few things that he may want to achieve even before he leaves here. So we are just here to listen to the VC, have a one-touch discussion with him, feel him, get the vibe from him. Then we can also go and restructure our life and develop it based on the stories we are going to hear. So that is simply the reason why we are here. Stay tuned. Sit down. Enjoy. There is a lot to drink, there is a lot to eat right from the program because VC wants to meet students and interact as well one-on-one, -on -one, not just what he's going to sit down here to tell us. So sit down, enjoy this program, and let's have a discussion with the VC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Akumia. Perfectly put. So as I said, we are here to celebrate, to engage with, to learn from our vice chancellor but we have some very very special people here to join us for this very very special event as well and i'd like to take the opportunity to introduce them to you so first of all obviously we have our vice chancellor in the person of professor emmanuel Hinafakwa, the man of the hour please let's welcome him officially thank you very much you're going to get a, in, a bit of a interesting insight into his life so, so stay, stay tuned for that, that because you're going to be shocked at how far he has come. And, and also inspired at the same time because you can also get there as well. Now we have next to him 
our Pro Vice Chancellor in the person of Professor Robert Ebo Henson. Let's welcome him as well. They're all here to celebrate this wonderful moment. We have our registrar in the person of Mr. Emmanuel Bedu. Please, let's welcome him. That's my boss. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Um, I also see the Director of Internal Audit, Mr. Kennedy Opong Fosu. Let's welcome him. We have the Director of University Relations, ladies and gentlemen, in the person of Dr. Nusrat Yahan Awubaka. Let's welcome her. We have Mrs. Lucy Egan, who handles Alumni Relations in the University Relations Directorate. Mrs. Lucy Egan, she's here as well. And Mr. Francis Edger, who is in charge of Public Relations and Communication in the University Relations Directorate. We have the Dean, the dean of the Graduate, graduate School, in the, the person of Professor Ebenezer Malcolm. Please, let's welcome him here as well. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Very important part of management. Um, I'm seeing Dr. Dr. Emmanuel Freeman, who is um, in charge of our Center for Online Learning. And he's also um, an HOD in the Faculty of Computing and Information Systems. Um, I'm seeing at the back, I'm seeing also uh, Mrs. Faustina uh, Modamti, who is um, from the Quality Promotion Assurance Unit as well. Let's welcome her. And all protocols observed. If there's anybody else I've left out, please, as time goes on, we'll introduce them to you. As I said, we're going to get into the meat of the program, the reason why we're here. But before that, we just want to sit back and um, have a bit of a brief musical interlude as we get into the rest of the program. So please... Our, Our DJ, DJ, please, please take, take it away for us. us. Next, Next up, we will be getting to be introduced to our guest of the night, Professor Imano Ohinia Farqua. Please, DJ, DJ take, take it away for us. Thank, thank you. you.
Thank you very much, DJ. Apologies for that. All right. So, as I mentioned, we have the man of the hour here with us. And um, I have the opportunity to introduce him to you to give you a bit of a breakdown of who he is, the man behind the position of the vice chancellor of GCTU. I was reading the profile, and to be honest, I was blown away by it. And um, I'm sure you will be too. Now, Professor Emmanuel Hinefakwa is a professor of food science technology and currently the vice chancellor of the Ghana Communication Technology University. He is the chief of the Fiapre traditional area in the Bono region of Ghana under the school name of Bimpong Professor Chem Amponsa II. He obtained undergraduate and postgraduate degrees at the University of Ghana and graduated with BSc honors and MPhil degrees in food science respectively in June 1996 and June 2000. He completed his PhD degree in food science from the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow, United Kingdom in November 2008. Professor Afwakwa is a distinguished scholar and has authored and co-authored 207 publications. I think we can give a round of applause for that. including 105 peer-reviewed journal publications, five books, four book chapters, two encyclopedia chapters, and 91 conference presentations. I haven't even been to 50 conferences in my life. And he's presented 91 conferences with published abstracts in food science and technology, food and nutrition security, and school programs. Professor Afwakwa is an international cocoa and chocolate scholar par excellence and has for many years served on several boards and committees of many national and international organizations and institutions. He is an international expert in cocoa and chocolate processing technology and he has authored two world reference books 
in, in the cocoa and chocolate industry entitled cocoa production and processing technology and chocolate science and technology in the pursuance of his duties as a food technologist he has traveled to 38 countries across the globe where he has gained high international recognition for his work he was a member of the board of directors of the global child nutrition foundation in washington united states from january 2007 to december 2019 and he has served as a consultant to many national and international organizations and projects including the world health organization food and agricultural organization ghana school feeding program german development corporation usaid C-A-R-I, TechnoSurf, and many, many, many others. He is a fellow of the African Scientific Institute and a member of several professional bodies, including the Ghana Science Association, African Society of Food Science and Technology, Institute of Food Technologists, and the American Chemical Society. His worldwide recognition is evidenced by the fact that in 2022 and 2023 in the World Times rankings, Professor Emmanuel Hinofaka was rated as the top, not second, not third, top research scientist in engineering and technology, as well as the top research scientist in food science and technology in Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, your man of the moment, our special guest, our, Our Vice, Vice Chancellor, Chancellor Professor, Professor Emmanuel Ohenia Farqua, please let's give it up for him. Your might, your might. 
Yes, we can be bigger, so much brighter than all we've seen in our past. Yes, we can be bigger, so much brighter, with hard work we can't be denied. With hard work we can't be denied. Thank you. I, I think, think we, we can, can do, do it better, better for her. Come, Come on, on let's, let's go. go. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ivy Ejua Amafo, who was the first, first runner for Miss GCTU 2023. Not, Not only does she have an amazing voice, but I'll have you know that she composed this song on her own. That, that is her song. song. Let's give it up for her. I'm also, I'm also proud to say that she is a business, business school student. She um, is an HR, HR student, level 200. 200. Clearly a woman of many, many talents. And just, just makes me jealous when I hear people sing like that. Because if, if I have to sing today, today I think we'll all leave the room. Congratulations, Congratulations and thank you very much for a wonderful performance. We appreciate you. You've done so well. All right, so we've been joined by some of our representatives from the SRC. I have, I have the opportunity, opportunity to introduce them to you tonight. We have the, the SRC president, president in the person of Mr. Honorable Harrison Amwako. Harrison, thank, thank you for joining us. His, His able, able lieutenant, SRC, SRC vice president, president, making sure that gender, gender balance is happening in GCT all the time. Francella Elu Bafo. Let's, Let's welcome, welcome her. Thank, thank you for joining us. We, we have Lorena. Now, nah, the General, General Secretary, Secretary, she's here, here as well. Thank, Thank you very much. Perez Cecil Lamti, SRC Treasurer. Treasurer. He's, He's at, at the back. back. Let's acknowledge him. Thank, Thank you for being here. here. Kirk Daniels, Daniels, the SRC Organizer. organizer. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Samuel Zandi, who is the SRC PRO. Is he here with us? Not, Not here. here. All right. Then we have Mercy Latin, the, the Women's Organizer. organizer. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much for joining, joining us. us. Now, to the business of the day. The reason why we are here to celebrate this man who has transformed Jesus. And when I say transformed, I think I'm not exaggerating, isn't it? Because you just look outside. For those of us who have been here, over five years, you can see that this university is almost unrecognizable in so many ways. And it is due in large part to the efforts, the foresight, the innovation, and the vision of this great man, Professor Emmanuel Oniafuakwa. We are now going to have a chance to sit down with him and, as I said, get an insight into what makes him tick, where he has come from, and how he got to where he is today. And to help us with that, I am honored to be able to call on our host for the evening, Miss Magdalene Williams, who is also a business school student. And she also works at City TV and City FM as well. Please, let's give it up for our wonderful host, Miss Magdalene Williams. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Oh, are you not happy to be here? Good evening, everyone. Good, great. Um, I'm happy to be here. Like you mentioned, my name is Magdalene Williams. I work at City TV and City FM. And I'm a proud student of Ghana Communication Technology University. I'm a business student. And it's a, a, a great honor to sit with one of the most important men in education in this country. Uh, very, I thought you were going to give a round of applause to that. <laughs> I say he's one of the most important men in the country because education makes a country tick. If I can borrow the words of the MC, 
Without education, nothing would happen. And for him to run this school or this institution for this number of years and looking at the change that has happened or has taken place, I think he deserves the loudest, the most appreciated round of applause for being the <laughs> Vice Chancellor of Ghana Communication Technology University. Hi, Prof. Hello. Are you good? I'm excellent. I can tell. <laughs> I, I must say you look stunning in your kaftan. Thank you, thank you. I, so I see a lot of people wearing African prints. I see some Batakari there, some African prints, all of, of that. And I'm really excited because where I work, every March is called the Heritage Month. And so if you can see, I'm a bit clouded in some tie and dye. We are cele celebrating everything Ghanaian, eat Ghana, drink Ghana, wear Ghana, talk Ghana. So I'm very excited that you're clouded in an African, um, what do you call it, kaftan with your hat. I think that's the signature, right? You always wear your hat. I remember when you were in the studio, you were wearing the hat too. All right. Are we ready, audience? Students, are you ready to get to know your vice chancellor? Uh, you don't sound enthusiastic. Are you ready? Good. So then let's get right into it. Prof, like I said earlier, Heritage Month. Um, would you say that this generation, and I would say this uh, young student and this generation in particular, are, we, are they drifting away from our heritage and culture as, as Ghanaians? or we are still in line of what the culture and tradition of Ghana is. I'm asking you this in the capacity of a vice chancellor, a father, a chief, a leader. What would you say? What, what are your thoughts on that, our heritage and culture? Thank you very much. Let me start by saying I'm very, very excited to be here this evening and for the opportunity to be here to talk to uh, the staff and students of the university that uh, I'm the chief servant. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> really, really an exciting moment for me and to share my life story with you. And I believe strongly that uh, I have a lot of very, very interesting stories that I'm going to share with you and would definitely inspire many of us who are young and are ready to work hard to achieve greatness. Yes, it is very, very important that as a nation, we, we, we stick to our heritage, our culture, our traditions, and, and these are things that spell out what we are as humans living in a certain society or community. Yeah, because the values that we expose our values that are taught from home. Yes. Very There's nothing like values and norms that are learned in society. What happens is that they say that charity begins at home. Exactly. Yeah. So every good thing that you do must begin at home. Yeah. And therefore, everything that you try to exhibit as a human being and your way of life your behavior should be learned from home. Exactly. And that is how in Ghana our traditions and our cultures have spelled out and outlined certain things that are the do's and don'ts in society that we learn at home as part of our upbringing. Yeah. It, and it's very important that we are able to keep this tradition and behave in that way so that whenever you are seen, you'll be able to be identified as to where you are coming from and who you are. Certainly. And but then, then the question. Yeah. Now <laughs> what we are observing is that in, in the past it, it was quite easy because the world wasn't so much open like it is now. Now the, the, we say the world has become a, a what? Global a global village. Mm -hmm. There is so much on the internet that the youth of today are called the millennium they are millennials. Very and good. We have the Gen Zs. We have the. Very good. So <laughs> at the turn at the turn of the century, from 1999 to 2000. That's the millennials. Very good. So 
all of us, or all of you, yeah. <laughs> or, or the younger ones who were born after the turn of the century, yeah. have come to learn certain practices that are quite different from the norms that were used to be taught at home. Yeah. Because a lot of things are changing, mm -hmm. and therefore those who were supposed to be the teachers at home and are now can't, can't even be found. Yeah. yeah, because of the way the world is moving so fast, everything is going quick, and therefore, if, if you're a parent at home, you also want to, to ensure that you go quick yeah. and go out there, hunt for money, yeah. or, or <laughs> scout for money. Right. Otherwise, you are not able to keep pace with the <laughs> changing face of the world. So, what we used to be taught at home, like you wake up in the morning with your parents, you, they sit down with you and you are taught how to do things. Now, we don't get it like that. And therefore, the millenniums are learning from what they read that is happening elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And most of these things that they read and they learn are things that are westernized. Yeah. Things that are actually taking place within the western world. Mm -hmm. Because they are likely the ones who are able to document most of the things they do. Exactly. The social media age. <laughs> so they just stay on social media and then learn the norms that they think can help them keep pace with what is happening. Okay. And that means that they are keeping away from the cultures and tradition society. of our nation okay. or the society, society or the, 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 the community in which they live. Yeah. And taking up something that is it's foreign. Okay. But it's not bad, bad, bad. Yeah, because if, if you go to most of our institutions, some of these cultures and traditions are taught. Yes. Yes. And therefore, they, they still find means of learning one or two, two things that will help them be, be able to expose themselves to the world as to who, who they are. But it, it, it can be better. It, All right. it can Quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, Thank you very much. I think he deserves a round of applause for that. Thank you. That was just by the way. Now we are about to get into business. Prof, what was growing up for you like? You know, how, how was the family like? Your parents, your siblings? Where exactly did you grow up? What was your Thank childhood you. so, like? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I, I have a very, very interesting life story. I can tell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, because I was born in Chinyani, in the Bono region, and uh, on 5th May 1970. So 5th wow. May, I'm going to be Pro 54. Poland. How many of us were born? Yeah. Can I see that? So, <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> to uh, Mr. Joseph Ohina Fuakwa and uh, Mrs. Margaret Ohina Fuakwa. Great. And uh, my father was a businessman. Ah. Yeah. And, and my mother was a... Uh, was also a trader. Okay. Yeah. So he was a businessman and a general contractor and a merchant. And I must say that my upbringing is quite uh, a very, very, very interesting one because I was born into a very rich f f family. I like the sound of rich. As at the time I was born. I mean, if you are counting or you're looking for 10 men in the whole of Bron Ahafu region who were rich, I mean, you can't leave my father out wow. because he was a very good and rich merchant. Wow. Then in the latter part of the 80s, 1979, when we had to go to school, I started school in the rapid preparatory school in Sunyani at the age of seven, 1977, and then <laughs> 79, you're moving so into the early 80s. <laughs> Uh, there, was, there was a very big turn of events. Okay. Yeah, because most of you here are young, so you might not have a seen, but you should have heard that around 1979, there was a coup d'etat yeah. by uh, the former president, yeah. Jerry John yeah. Rollins. Yeah. And then in 81, again, he organized the second one. And uh, his aim was literally to ensure that he, he makes every Ghanaian either 
unify the, the economic situation in Ghana. So if you are rich, you are not expected to be rich. So he could close the gap between the rich and the poor. And therefore, he came hunting the very rich. He came hunting the very rich. And those who were rich had their shops, had businesses. He worked, went after them. Some were stripped naked on the street, driven. Yeah. And, and all sorts of things happened in this nation. A lot. So many people who were rich at that time became poor because he closed their businesses. I mean, my father had a livestock farm of over 4,000 cattle. No way. 3,000 sheep and goats. Wow. On a land that covers about 1,500 acres. Wow. And so if I'm telling you that he was a rich man, oh, you can understand that. He was very rich. And everything came to a standstill. Oh. So after that time, I went through primary school to complete route common entrance examination. At that time, you had to write common entrance examination to enable you enter university yeah. after you've passed. Yeah. And it was just English, math, uh, verbal, and <laughs> quantitative. <laughs> now, uh, I mean, all these things have changed. Yeah. So you, you, you write English, you write math, and verbal aptitude, and quantitative aptitude. Wow. And then that uh, uh, allows you to enter, to enter secondary school. So I wrote the common entrance examination in 1982. Okay. And that means that that was the era when everything Changing. has turned over yeah. in, 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 in the face of, of the, rich man. the rich man. So how was it for you then? Oh, oh, yeah, we had to cope. Yeah, because you, you couldn't kill yourself because I mean, your He's father was rich changed. and now he's become... And, 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 and it was very difficult and very, very challenging. So even though I passed common training examination in 1982 to go to secondary school, I couldn't go to school. I couldn't just go to school because the man who was so rich, had so many cars, had to work. I mean, at, it, it, it was hard. Sometimes, if he's going to Sunyani from Fiapre, he walks. No way. And you, you know him as a rich man, so you won't think that he you doesn't wonder. have money to take transport. But as a matter of fact, he was so down that he didn't have anything. Wow. But if you ask him, why are you, why are, are you working? He said he's exercising. <laughs> that was a smart man. <laughs> he's exercising. <laughs> and, and you know that, well, when he's getting older, and therefore, yeah, it will be a good, way to, yeah. <laughs> a good way to exercise. But as, as a matter of fact, he, he, he became so poor. Right. that right. He, So I couldn't go to secondary school. Then I realized that no, in spite of the fact that I couldn't go to secondary school, doesn't mean that my education has ended. ended yes. I needed to keep myself in school. So I had the discussions with my mother that I wanted to find a school in February to attend so that within the year, I'll see how best I can mobilize myself to enter secondary school. So I was sent to this uh, Presby. Uh, school and to be able to write middle school even certificate examination at that time when you go to primary one six you go to form one form two form three form four and then you write a middle school living certificate examination and at, at that time it was a middle school living certificate examination that was a circuit that most people were using to work it was very very heavy so at the age of 12 eight, 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 I was sent to form four. Wow, at the age of 12? Yes. I see. And at that time, if you find students who were in form four, they were in the ages of 21, yeah, 22, 23, right, 24, and, and some even older. And I was 12. I was sent to, because I was intelligent. I, I, I mean, I was very sharp. Yeah. So they, they conducted a little test, and then I said, no, 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 this boy is too, too intelligent. He, he can just be in form four. And then attempt the middle school living circuit examination. So I missed the first term. I went there, second term. Second term, within a very short term, I had to learn because in the primary international school, where I went to school, is, is, as has been termed like it's an international school now, we're just learning English, math, 
quantitative endeavor to write common entrance to be able to enter sec secondary. Sec secondary school. We're not writing middle school living certificate examination. And to be able to write middle school living certificate examination and to pass, you have to learn geography and history in addition, which I had never learned. So I had to sit down and learn history to be able to write the exam. exam yeah. And then within a few weeks, when they, they conducted the exam for the end of term examination, mm -hmm. I was first. How did you do that? <laughs> I was, Someone I was who first has never class. learned geography, nothing. How, did, how are you was, this brave? <laughs> I was first at the age of 12. And, and these were older, younger youth, uh, men. And <laughs> they thought that, no, 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 no. I, I mean, how can this small boy come to this class and, and come and meet us all, all to it within, this, <laughs> within a matter of just two months? He hadn't learned history before, he hadn't learned geography, and I beat all of them to it. So I was carried on the shoulders oh, of this pen. Hold on, hold on. Do you remember <laughs> any of the older people in your class then? Yeah, actually, my, my, my queen mother, now, the lady who is a queen mother on my was one of them. Hi. It's a twin. And they, they were two ladies. Okay. She and her twin sister were in that class. <laughs> and they are about eight, ten years older than me. And so they really protected me because <laughs> they didn't play at me. With me at all. So I, I was carried from the school to, to my house because oh, they, they had never seen <laughs> such a brilliant, <laughs> a, a brilliant boy like that before. Yeah. Wow. And then it, it, it went on. We, we started with uh, spelling bee quizzes in, in the Sunyani school and things like that. And it was being broadcasted on air. Oh, and okay. from the start to the end, every quiz question, I'll get everything right. So it was like, wow. And, but I had to sing through because I was going to write a middle school living examination certificate soon. And then after that, what? Because if you finish Form 4, you still have to continue. Yes. Because I knew that, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't uh, made for <laughs> uh, home after school, after that level of education. So I needed to go to school. So... But, but I, then what was the driving force for you? Because it seemed very, very driven. Yeah. Do you understand? Your father was very rich, he lost all the wealth. Yeah. You still didn't give up, you wanted to still pursue. Yeah. You went on, beat every senior person in your class. You were still not convinced, you still wanted to go. What, what was it that kept you going? Um, one, I knew that even though I was young, I, there's a brighter future for me. Yeah, because of the level of intelligence that I exhibited, uh, 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 exhibited at that time, yeah. I, I definitely knew that I can't just complete yeah. middle school and just stop. I have to continue, go to sec secondary school, yeah. and then aspire to be a greater person in life. So I started planning. I put, at that age, I started planning my life. And what I did was, I decided that, okay, if I let my father know that I am going out to trade, I started buying towels and selling. I started buying sponges and selling. And then Did you hear that? On, he was on, on a Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, I, will, I, I, I make a shoe shine box. Then I will swap the box outside the house because I wouldn't want my father to see that I'm going for shoe shine. I'm you, going to work for money. Beat you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because uh, uh, it was no, 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 so, so yeah, of course. So uh, how do you, you disgrace him like that? So I, I, I take my box, then I, I hit it around, and then, so, so from February I walk on the street through now the uh, University of Energy and Natural Resources, walk That's through Sunyani Residency, yeah, and at the end of the day I come with some money. Then I started buying the things I needed for school. So when I go come, the little money I get, I'll buy some soap. I'll buy some towel. I'll buy my uh, trunk. I'll buy choppers and everything. To ensure that when there is time to go to school, I'll 
I can go to school. Even if my father says he doesn't have money, I need to prepare myself and make sure that I, 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 I get to school. So we wrote a middle school living certificate examination, and then we, I passed. Oh, 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 of course, I had a, 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 a distinction. Yeah. But I realized that after the middle school work next, I needed to enter secondary school. But my father is not rich enough to send me to a boarding school. And his condition is such that if I go to him to tell him that I'm preparing myself for <laughs> secondary school, I mean, he will even insult me. Yeah, because I can understand the, the because you know situation at the time. Yeah. So I prepared myself for school. So, what I started doing was, there is um, this school now called Chediamanfo Senior High School in, in Sunyani. Okay. At that time, it was known as the Sunyani Day Secondary School. It, it was a day secondary school. So, I just planned that, okay, let me first find myself into a day school. And with a day school, I can still stay at home and even walk to school every day, even if I won't get any money. At the end of the week, Weekend, I'll go <laughs> hit in my box yeah. and, and work, shine, shine in shoes, shoes. And, and, and make a little <laughs> bit of money that, that at least I can use <laughs> during the week. So I did that. So I went to write the entrance examination. They used to write the entrance examination and then pick um, the best uh, uh, and, and, and then the number they want to admit. And I went to, I saved my pocket money. I was given like 5p. That's a day, five pesos, five pesos yeah. a day to go to school, yeah, for a little lunch, yeah. yeah, so I saved that money for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. He he was a headmaster of that school at that time. Cool. When the first week, when the roll call was done and realized that I was first, he called me into his office and he said that in this institution we have a culture, and the culture is that the first Students. out of it, those who will be admitted for the first year, the first person is always given a scholarship, and therefore wow. we, we, we realize that you. Are the first person, and therefore you are going to be given. Wow, uh, that's, that's book, good. Book, 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 book. So I think up to this point, all that you have said, I've gathered a few things. I found perseverance in there. I found planning. I found saving. I found entrepreneurial spirit, because at your age. You, you had the mindset that, okay, let me save small of whatever they were giving me to put together a, a, a shoe shine box. How many people at the age of 12 are thinking this way? So I think for your, for your leadership skills, your entrepreneurial skills started way back. Way back. It's, way back. it's, it's amazing. And I, I think and, and all I the students here have something to I was determined, I was determined that it's part of the challenges in which I found myself at that time. Yeah. That is not going to deter me from getting yes. good Yes, so you wanted to forge forward. So I had to forge forward. forward. So I went there, 
The first term, I was first. Second term, uh, he is the MD for Adrensa Press. Adrensa, Adrensa, Adrensa has so many books. Yeah, so I put together all these reports from first year, second year, uh, third year up to second term, and then I posted them to, to him. Uh, 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 lots and lots of awards. So, 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 so that's you there. Yes. So, I went to St. Augustine's College and something happened. The first time, there has never been any new person who has fallen within the first 10 block. Because those guys who go there are very intelligent. Yeah, but very. What was your position in the first I, year? I was fourth. So, the headmaster called me again and said that, okay, he's going to make an attempt to convert my day scholarship into a boarding scholarship then it, it was done so then i had, had a scholarship i was going to the school not knowing, because at that time it, it wasn't free yeah. secondary school wasn't oh, free yeah. you have to pay, to pay i was going to the school not knowing who was going to pay my fees because it wasn't my uncle that said me that that is going to pay my fees and my father doesn't have money to be able to do that and he, he didn't he wasn't even aware so all this time your father was not aware until i had to come And then I had to inform him, and my uncle came and informed him, and everything. And then I said, Oh, okay, that's fine. This is ready to allow me to go. So I, I came. So I got a scholarship again, and then in form four, I was given another scholarship by the school, a bursary. So the Cocoa Scholarship was paying my fees, and they were giving the bursary to me as job money. <laughs> Enjoyed. So you had two scholarships had at the same two time. Two scholarships. And I've, I've always, I don't know, it's a blessing. It's a, it's, it's, a blessing. It's, a, it's, it's a blessing from God. Because I went to do my PhD in Scotland. I was telling the Prophet Cook yesterday at the program. I went with Ghana Government Scholarship and I had another scholarship. So, by your life has been about scholarship. so, yes. So, all throughout my education, it was about scholarship. I was able to go to school because of Ghana Cocoa World Scholarship. And that, and that should tell you something why I decided to do the Cocoa World for Ghana. I was going to go to that. Yeah. <laughs> so when I decided to specialize in an area, in the area of food science, I said, these people who have told to educate me, there's no person who is a scientist in Cocoa, in Ghana. All the books you read, are written by whites. Meanwhile, they don't grow cocoa. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, to get a higher education PhD and specialize in the area of cocoa and be able to write a book right. that yeah. people in Ghana and Africa can also learn to be able to produce more and, 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 and do more. And that is why I, I developed my expertise in the area of cocoa. Co co so I went to St. Augustine's College, passed um, the O level. Had the, the ad, distinction, and then I was admitted again to sis form because you, are, you, you get selected from O level to do A level. And then I went, at that time, sis form was free. Sis, sis form education at that time was free. So I had the opportunity of continuing under that for free. And then I came finished the A level and, and, and entered the University of Ghana in 1992. So was it at St. Augustine's College that you decided to go into um, let's say food research or how? Yes. When did it start? So uh, how it, 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 it came about, I had an uncle in Kumasi while I was in school, school in, who was a uh, uh, key distributor for the food processing industries. So Nestle, Unilever, he was an agent, he has shops. But then he, 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 he goes to them and warehouses. So he goes for them and then he will uh, distribute the food to agents all across the country. So he introduced me that there's this subject in, at the University of Ghana called food science. And when they complete they are the ones that work in the industry 
to process food. So I, I developed a very keen interest in that. Yeah. Because one, I, I wasn't interested in, in medicine yeah. at all. Okay. So if, even though A level I passed very well, I didn't choose. Sure. I knew when I was going to the University of Ghana, I knew that I was going to do food science. Do food science. At that time. Yeah, yeah because he, he, he introduced me to, yeah. to the field. So I went and then we started. At that time, you were admitted into biological sciences. Biological. Then year two, you were selected into your specific areas. And then I went directly. So I did food science single major. I didn't combine with nutrition. I didn't combine with biochemistry, anything. I did food science because I knew exactly what I wanted to wanted, do. Yes. So just a few of us, it was about eight of us who did food, food science. science alone. Where are some of your mates? Where are they still there are some working. Yeah, last time Mahulu was here, he's an, he an Nestle. And uh, Nestle, Nestle. Oh, wow. Unilever, really and good. other industries. That's yeah. Really good. yeah. So I, I finished university, and then I realized that I haven't finished. Because now uh, my taste changed. And my perception about life also changed. also changed. So even though I wanted to go work in the food processing industry, when I started school, I realized that there was more to the program or the course that, than just yeah. working in the industry. Yeah. But I was strongly in inspired by one man called Who Professor is? Professor Samuel Sefadidi. Okay. Who when we went to second year, third year in the department. He had then become an associate professor, just like yeah, my son, the dean of students. Is he here? The dean of students is now an associate professor. Please. Wow, that is that. That's yeah, let me announce it. Though. Yesterday, uh, uh, the council of the institution promoted him to an associate Aww. professor. So he's no more Doctor Akumia. He's Professor. professor. Hey, Akumia. congratulations. So, you really admired him. I really admired him. So I studied a lot about him, and then I worked under him for my BSc uh, project, and he really inspired me. So but when I completed, when all my friends were rushing to the industry, at that time, I mean, the industry, you finish food science, the next day you are in the industry. Because they we are just people. few. Yeah. And, and they needed, a, they needed a, 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 a experts. Yeah. yeah. But I said, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I said I wanted to go and work in the industry, but, but I'm, I'm no more interested. The I've seen this man, changed. and I want to be like him. Yeah. I want to be a professor like Professor <laughs> Sefa Dede. So I'll continue, come back to get a master's, and then continue to get a PhD, lecture at the University of Ghana, and become a professor like him. And it was quite interesting. That was great ambition. <laughs> it was interesting. Yeah, sure. So I went, but at that time at the University of Ghana, you, you, you have aspirations, but you don't know where you are going to take money to be able to, yes, to, <laughs> to, 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 to pay for all these uh, as, 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 as aspirations. But yeah. as I said, at that time, at the University of Ghana, if you get a first class or a very strong second upper, mm -hmm. you are given a University of Ghana scholarship that was being given for intelligent students who were being mentored to become Lecturers. Lecturers. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Okay. So, in 1996, um, I, I, I was supposed to have finished in 95. Yeah. yeah. And there, were, there was this uh, strike, industrial action the whole year. So, nobody completed in 95. And then we completed in 96. And in 96, I, I didn't get a first class, as a matter of fact, because there was a turnover. University of Ghana had introduced this new semester system. Okay. And it started with us. Okay. And it came with its own challenges. challenges. They were writing their exams at the end of the year. Okay. And then you we see people on. crying at the start of every academic year. How many of us would have survived that? It wasn't easy. <laughs> at the start of every academic year, they come to post the pass list. The pass, pass list. Yeah. So if you are standing there and somebody tells you, hey, I, 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 I can't I find my name. name. <laughs> <laughs> then you know that the person is in trouble. <laughs> and then, if you see somebody <laughs> beginning to weep silently, <laughs> is that many of our students here would have been sacked. 
Because I know, oh, no, some, of you are, not yeah, <laughs> some of you are trailing two, two courses. If you trail one course, you repeat the year. No way. If you trail two courses, you are sacked. <laughs> okay. At that Special time. request. Yeah. Prof, you need to say it again. Registrar. <laughs> if you trail one course, wow. you repeat the year. So if you are in first year, you are doing economics, IT, and for one IT subject course, you are going to fail. And you pass all the rest, and you fail one. You repeat the first year all over again. No way. That, that is, yes. How many of them were? Ask your parents. <laughs> I mean, if they are old enough to <laughs> have. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then if you fail two, if you fail two subjects, mm -hmm. by the time the pass list comes and you get back to your hall, there's a letter waiting for you to go home. No way. <laughs> so how many students will be left in the school then? Yeah, because so <laughs> at a time, yeah. So when um, I, I went to first at the University of Ghana in 92, the entire university, we were 9,000. I see. The yeah, University of Ghana, the whole school, we were 9,000. I see. And now, it's, 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 so 40,000, 50,000. Yeah, we are just wow. 9,000. And, and, and you had a big room. You are either, either in the big room alone or you are two. with people, yeah. And, sure. and, and you are sacked if you fail two subjects. You are sacked. That, that is serious. That is serious. So, so I, I, what, would you say, what would you say are some, let's say, um, should I say tidbits on how a student should choose their career path? Because looking at how you, you've been very um, experimental in your journey, right? From, yeah. from primary to, to your um, sixth form, A level. Yeah, it's so been very experimental. At the master's too, I had you? another scholarship. Hey. <laughs> at the master's So you, level. your whole life is about scholarship. And, and yes, then, scholarship. so immediately I completed in 1999, I was employed at the University of Ghana on a project. Yes. And then I went on a project for two years, and then in 2001, 2002, I was uh, recruited well as a, as as a, a lecturer. lecturer. Yes. Because even when I was working on a project, I, I, I still taught. <laughs> I was teaching when I was a lecturer. So, so the head of the department thought, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's no, why this Prof. You hold right. So, so at the University to, of Ghana, as you were lecturing, <laughs> were you married then? No. Because so, I, I don't know how you After that time I started, I wasn't married. So I started in, uh, uh, my, my appointment was given in 2001. One, but I started in January 2002. Okay. Yeah, so at that time I wasn't married. You weren't married. So yeah. you had all the time. Yeah, so yeah, I had I all the time. That. But al al along all these lines, there's something that really motivated me. And, and I want every one of you to know. Please there is this attention. rhyme and adage that uh, we are taught whilst we are in school. We are at the international school okay. at the age of six, seven. The heights that great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flights, but those whilst their companions slept were toiling upwards in the night. Good. Good. I think, I think you'd have to repeat that. And I will entreat that the, the social media team or the communication team My students, this. listen and write this down. Okay. There is no secret to greatness in life. Say it, say it. <laughs> Prof, Prof is ready to hear. There is no easy way to greatness in life. There is you have to toil, toil to be able to achieve it. If you want to achieve greatness that is sustained, mm -hmm. you, you have to earn it. earn it. If you steal it, it will go the same way as you stole, you stole it. it. Perfect. So the height that great men, the height, the height, height, you are short, height that great men rigged and kept. So you are able to reach there as a height and then you keep, you, you sustain it. We're not attained by sudden flights. So it's not like you've put a stone in, in a <laughs> catapult. Mm -hmm. and, then, so just, and then within a second you get there. No, it doesn't work like that. 
time. But those whilst their companions slept were toiling upwards in the night. Mm -hmm. If you want to become successful, they say everybody should sleep eight hours. I tell you, if you sleep eight hours, that's normal for everybody to sleep eight hours. But I tell you that if you sleep eight hours, you can't achieve greatness. You will be a normal person. So you go to work, you are just a normal staff, you are paid the normal, then you can't afford a car, you can't build a house, your, your life will be normal. If you yeah. want to be super normal, to become successful and to be great, you have to cut down on the hours of your sleep and put those hours of, of your sleep to active work, productive work. Productive work. Productive work. And I can tell you, it will work. If you put two hours a day into your studies, so you are studying just one hour now, and then you cut down your sleep and you put additional two hours to it, you will never fail any exam. Because at the end of the year, two hours times 300, 300. Yeah. <laughs> you have, you have, you have 55, 26. That is over 1,000 hours. And there's no way you put 1,000 plus hours. So I knew about this right from age 12. And that is why I was being first. Because yeah. I wake up, I sleep early, I, I won't go out to do, 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 to do what? Do, 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 do unnecessary things at that age. So you sleep early, wake up. By 2, 3, you are up on your books. 3 a.m. Are we, are, we, are, and we, are we here? 3 a.m. I did it for many decades. Yeah. So if you look at the number of papers I've written, the number of books I've written, and you, you look at my age, it will take it's, somebody who is over eight yeah. to have been able to write all these articles. That means that those extra hours were being put to good use whilst cutting down on, on my sleep. Good, good. So, um, and it happens. <laughs> Ask your parents. Ask anybody who, who, who you find as a great man. Yeah. If they sleep eight hours and plus, so you will be poor. If you sleep for eight hours plus, you will be poor. Cut down on the number of hours of your sleep. Those businessmen, mm -hmm. those scientists, mm -hmm. those irrespective of the field, you must be an entrepreneur. Even the entrepreneurs, those that have their own businesses. They don't sleep. Yeah. Some sleep three, four hours. <laughs> they don't sleep. If you want to be successful in life, that is a secret. Yeah. And God will never fail you. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Prof. Um, I think you've touched on a bit of your writing, but I am particularly surprised as to how many books you have authored. I... I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you've done it, but just motivate us. Like, how are you able to write all these number of books? Yeah, so, I've got another story. How many hours so, do you sleep? After I've been employed as a lecturer, after three years, I had an opportunity, as I said, to work under Professor, Professor Sifa Dede. Yeah. And he was an international man. Okay. He was writing grant for <laughs> proposals and uh, 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 funds. Okay. And, and was winning grants and was working around the world, traveling. So he really inspired me. And not, not just that I wanted to be like him as a professor, but I wanted to also be an international traveler like him, exactly. an, an international scientist like him. Mm -hmm. So I had opportunity of... There was this one opportunity he gave me. He sent me to a conference in Ibadan. There is this agricultural institution called International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, ITA. And we were working on a copy project with University of Georgia in Atlanta. So um, I went there to, uh, uh, to present a, a paper on a project in 2000, and that spelled my interest to become a lecturer and then to become a, a good writer. Because when I went there, 
in Ghana, you wouldn't find most of these journals, new journals in our libraries. Yeah. But when I went to the IT library, I saw journals yeah. in our field of study. Yeah. I said, wow. And these were current journals. And I looked at the papers that were being published in the a journal. And I told her, ah, okay. I have a master's school. Yeah. My master's studies, I hadn't written one of them, yeah. one article out of them. So I looked at the trend, I, I photocopied some of them. When I came, I converted my master's thesis into 10 articles. Wow. I mean, my professor was shocked. He will be 10 He was articles. shocked. I wrote 10 articles out of my master's thesis. You are an inspiration. Trust so, me. when I was appointed, appointed as a lecturer in 2000, 2003, I already had articles. So, in 2005, when I decided to, to go, go for my PhD, at that time, you, you, it wasn't a criteria that you should get a PhD before you could be promoted to senior lecturer. 2005, I put in an application to become a senior lecturer because I had I had about 20 articles at that time. And, 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 and a young man, so he inspired me and I applied. I applied and then I left. When I went to Scotland, I said, as I said, I want to develop my expertise in the area of cocoa because there's no scientist in cocoa yeah. from, from, from Ghana. All the books we read and we study are written by white men and women and say, no, 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 not, not this one. A Ghanaian to has help. to write it. Yeah. So I went there to develop my expertise. When I got to Stratlite, my supervisor asked me, I said, ah, I've already sent you the, 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 the thesis area, Coco. And I said, okay. When I, I, I sent it to him, he realized that in the whole university, or all the universities in, in, in Glasgow, they didn't have any expert in that area. So he had already negotiated with Nestle in York, in England, to be able to take me up on attachment so that I'll be able to spend six months there wow. and learn the nitty gritties of cocoa processing, processing yeah. the, the industrial applications, industrial equipment and, 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 and all that. So I spent only four days in Glasgow and I was sent to York. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine a Ghanaian, hardworking Ghanaian, finding myself in a very big, well sophisticated, world class lab. Wow. I, I worked hard. I worked hard. So at the end of the six months, usually you are given a, 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 card. a card. So when, 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 when you enter, mm -hmm. you clock. Okay. So when you clock, it tells the time that you, you came, came to work. And then the when you go out, you clock and then it, it closes you. And it's a door. If you, there's no, no, no human being there. If you're not a registered member, if you, and you don't have a car, and therefore you can't block to enter, and then you can't block to leave. So, and there were 120 signs. It so happened that when I went there, I was the only black, black, black human being in the whole of that research center. Wow. Yeah. How was so, it feeling like to be the only black? It, it was, it was special. I, 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 I felt special. I felt I was privileged. And the privilege is not something I should take for granted because it is definitely for a reason why I should be able to I, I, I will have an opening. Because they, they told me that one, they haven't recruited somebody from Africa before. And they haven't recruited a black person before. What they do is that they keep the students from Birmingham University, Nottingham, Stratlight, and other universities in England and Scotland. So you were the but black over the years, it's all African. white. All white. So I was the first black person who had entered the plant. And they had a called uh, Roundtree. Yeah. And that factory is about the best in Nestle Industries in, in the world. They process cocoa and coffee. Yeah. So I had the opportunity of working at the research center and also working at the industry on the plant. Yeah. So yes. So I went to touch. So everything about processing life from 
production of, of course, as we do from, from Ghana, but the bean processing at the industrial level. And then I had to educate myself about the science of it. Yes. And that was why yes. I was there. So at the end of the six months, when they checked the number of hours, everybody's supposed to do 40 hours. Going to eight hours a day. So, and then, so, so 40 hours a day. Uh-huh. 350 plus. So other than the 40 that you're supposed to do in, in, in a month, in a, in a, they work it out and then on a month, a, a monthly basis, they check for every staff. So if you have worked plus 10 plus 20, you are paid for the extra hours that you work on the plant. So they realized that I had worked 350 hours plus. They said that, who is this? This. So they, they, they went for me. The MD and his management came for me. I said, What have I been doing on the plant? By the way, this is a, a white management looking for a black man. Yeah. So I, I, I said, I, I was here studying, I was here learning. So I spent more hours on, on my research and all that. And then trying to identify the learn about the science of the world, get deep inside the place. The time is not just time used, but time spent. I had written two review articles. Mm-hmm. Two review articles within six shocked. months of entering the plant. And then, so I, I showed them to them, and they were like, shock. They will be. Review articles that have been published in published. world-class journals. So they said, no, <laughs> you, you came you are for special. six months attachment, <laughs> you are not going. Oh. So... What they're going to do is to keep me on the plant, yeah. give me full scholarship to sponsor my research, and another scholarship, me, and pay me. So I was being paid one thousand pounds every month as a student. Did you hear that? One thousand pounds. I went on Ghana government scholarship, and we're earning five hundred pounds a month. Not Ghana government scholarship. At times, three months a month. Compa- so the students were forced to work. Yeah. On the yeah. In, 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 yeah. Supermarkets, shops, and this, this kind of things. But I had opportunity of uh, finding myself at Nestle. So I was being paid proper, one thousand pounds a month, in addition to my <laughs> five five hundred pounds. So, a month so even as a student, I was very rich. Yes, you will be. Well, a student. I and mean, earning thousand five hundred pounds. Work thousand five hundred times seventeen. Charlie, <laughs> that's a you one pound is 17 cities now. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, now, uh-huh. yeah. So if you work it out, you get know how much I was earning every month as, as a student. As a student. So I, 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 I worked, I really worked hard, and within two years, I finished my Your PhD. PhD. I finished, and I wanted to submit my, 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 my thesis, and uh, the investor said, no, no, no. They are not going to allow you to submit because you have to get a, a, what enter the third year of, of the PhD so that they can take their school fees. Okay. Because so about eight, 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 uh, uh, twenty-one thousand pounds fees. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So you have to enter the third year so that they take their fees take before you, you can submit. Okay. So Nestle said, "Okay, we know you have done." And at that time, I had written a lot of, of, of articles. articles. And most of the institutions in the UK and Europe, if you are doing, you either select to do PhD by thesis, okay, or you do PhD by articles. Okay, so 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 you have to write about four articles, and when they are published in good journals, you you be rated, okay, and you graduate. Okay. But I'd written about eight. Eesh. I'd written about eight. So they said that, okay, from the criteria that we have in the UK, you already have a PhD. Yeah. So we are going to recruit you, employ you with somebody, uh, as somebody with a PhD, PhD, and pay you well as such, and then allow you to just wait and submit your thesis. So I waited, and then the 1,000 pounds was increased to 3,600 pounds. £1,000 to so 3000 So the third year of, 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 of my PhD, <laughs> I was being paid as a scientist. 
So I was earning three thousand six hundred pounds a month. A month. Yeah. So, and I didn't waste the money. <laughs> I didn't waste the so, money at all. <laughs> so the third year, I submitted my thesis in July, November. I had graduated. So the the the, the picture you see with the blue uh, AKP. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the that the, the was... university. So I graduated in November. I went there in January 2006, and I graduated in November 2008. Less than three years. Less than three years. Yes, I graduated, and I told Nestle, "Well, thank you very much. I'm going back to Ghana." They said, "What? You are not going anywhere." Hey, <laughs> they cannot leave you. We have invested so much in you. We trained you as an expert for Coco, yeah. and wanted to work for us in England. So they called their lawyer in London to call me to start working on my doc documents to get me a five-year high, highly skilled visa. Yeah. The lawyer called me and said, no, 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 I'm going back to You're Ghana. You're going back to Ghana. He said, you're not yeah. serious. People yeah. beg us for this kind of opportunity. My, my country needs me more. And you are going back to Ghana? No, no, no. As what is, he said, yes, if you need me, invite me. I'll come and work for you or any of your, your countries go work. But I want to stay and work in Ghana for them. They talked and talked and talked. They said if, if eventually they said they were going to set up a cocoa research center in in Brazil. And that they, they wanted me to go there and work. If I didn't want to stay in the UK. I said, no, no, it's not about staying in the UK. They are happy. But because I was brought up by the poor cocoa farmers one. And therefore, I couldn't see myself being so selfish and live in the UK and collect over five thousand pounds a month and be rich. That's alone. a good one. Whilst people have toiled so much to educate me. I can't even see how one can. So, December twenty eighth, December two thousand and eight, I was in Ghana. Yeah. So I came down, continued working as a lecturer, and then starting, and I then. I had learned a lot because I had a well to work in the industry research and I learned a lot. I learned a lot. So one thing happened. When I submitted my thesis for examination, there was this professor from the University of Birmingham who was an assessor. And he's, he, when he came to conduct the oral examination on me, he gave me advice. He said that when they informed him that he was going to examine a thesis in chocolate science, he said, well, I have done some work in this area, but I still think I need to update myself on, on current issue. So he went online to look for information from journals in you know, food science. And apparently, over 90% of the articles he got and he downloaded and we're written, we're coming from one person working at Nestle in York. So he, he, he was amazed. So he, he, he said he's made his mind that he will come and look for the person and be able to collaborate with, 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 with him. Then the thesis came and the name of the person whose work has educated him is the thesis that he's coming to examine. <laughs> So when he came to Ghana, so he might get to this. And what it is about me, I'm very particular yeah. about my writing. Yeah. A dot and a T, I will dot everything. Very meticulous. At the University of Ghana, I was the first person whose master's thesis went for three examiners. The three theses came. Nobody put a pen in all the three. I picked the soft copies and immediately went to bind them into a hard, hard, hard copy. I didn't change one page. You won't get any error. And the same, my PhD, they marked it, the two examiners, nobody got an I where there's supposed to be an I and the dot is not there. No mistake. So he came and advised me, he said, look, you have educated me. Yeah. I'm not here to examine you. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, your knowledge is so deep it's, that yeah. <laughs> you, you have You know too me. much. And then he told the story. And then he advised that, look, 
the nature of the things I've written and the insight, the kind of information I have there, when I complete school, I should do a little bit more literature review into it and convert the thesis into a book. And it will be a world seller in that field. Because he has been in this cocoa so chocolate long. industry work for a, 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 lot, a long while and he's never read any book that goes deep in the science of things like I have done. So I should just convert the book uh, the the is in, in, into a book. Yeah. Well and exactly I did that. When I came back to Ghana, I started compiling data, went to farms, cocoa farms around Ghana, taking images, pictures, and this, compiled the, 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 the systems well. And then wrote my first book. Then so how many books uh, uh, another, uh, another, another. And then, so, so I became a world seller. If yeah, Wiley in the UK are subject to print and sell, and on an annual basis, they, they bring you royalties. Royalties, okay, yeah. Yeah. So every year, you get royalties. When I came down, I had so much money that I said, What did you use with the money? I bought an E class. Yeah, Mercedes Benz. Hey, you have good taste. I mean, you deserve it. Yeah. That Mercedes Benz, I bought the Mercedes Benz fresh in Ghana. See a rubber. With dollars. Ish. Ish. Dollars taken directly from my accounts. Oh my and God. Bought Seventy-five. How was the dollars. feeling like? And that Mercedes Benz that was bought <laughs> in 2009 is the Mercedes Benz that sits under that shell. I, I mean, the, the car park. Oh. So if you see E class with. <laughs> 2009 plate. Yeah. That was the Benz I bought. It's your hard earned money. Because well, I needed a good car. I had worked hard. I thought I deserved a good car. You deserved that it. That you can ride for a very long time. Yes. I should work hard to achieve other things. Yes. Place. Yes. Now which are seven. Now with them. So, so pro- it's, 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 it's not easy. Yeah. But I can assure you that if you work hard, you will, you will reap. What you, you sow. You reap what you sow. Yeah. I mean, you will never fail. Yeah. But it's very, very important that we put ourselves to the fact that to everything you are doing, like I did at that younger age, yeah. I planned my life. Mm-hmm. I planned my life. Yes, you did. You did. But, Prof, in all that you have said, it's been about education, scholarship, academia, blah, blah, blah. What do you do for fun? What do you do? I know it's, I mean, I it's good to be football. serious. And I watch football. I'm oh. a football fan. I can sit down on a Saturday from morning till night. I see. Watching football. <laughs> but do you, have you ever played yourself? And like, then, do you play? When, when I was in, when I went to <laughs> St. Augustine's College. You let me tell you this. Interesting. I wasn't playing football. Okay. I was running. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, wow. I, I, <laughs> I was a good athlete. And, and I was running 800 and 1,500. <laughs> but something happened. When, when we went to Form 5, those seniors that were ahead of us, some of the athletes mm-hmm. did not do too well. Oh, okay. And you know, St. Augustine's College is a well sought institution mm-hmm. that people are applying from left to right all over all Ghana. Over so if you don't get distinction with I get 12 or less, mm-hmm. you are not selected to <laughs> cis form. Mm-hmm. So these young men who were running and were uh, uh, doing well for us, and so Augusto is, is always on top. We beat at this school and fans and we are happy. They're making the school happy and proud. Mm-hmm. They got a great. 25, 26, oh. and then they came to plead with the Einstein Master Academic. Mm-hmm. We had two Einstein Masters. There's one academic and the one administrator. So the administrator is the one in charge of the sports and ladies houses and all that. Yeah. And the academic is in charge of the academic of way. Academic. If the academic headmaster meets you in town, <laughs> you greet him, he will respond, and then he will pass. He won't ask you for your exit. He says, that is not his work. I see. When they came begging him, he said that go away. When your friends were in the classroom learning, 
you were on the field breaking unnecessary records. Oh, that's mean. I said, ah. <laughs> I'm not, going to, I'm not going to run for the school again. <laughs> so, <laughs> you change your mind. If I, I don't mean, concentrate I on my studies to pass well. From Belgium, there's another one called AGM. Mm -hmm. Acha Midlands Daniels. Okay. They've also set up another plant in, in, in Kumasi, Kaswa. Okay. And then there's now Kagel. It's also in okay. Tema. Okay. And now there's Niche. Yeah, That's a local one. There's <laughs> Tuton and, and then many others. Ramco and Co. So all these are various industries that through consultation advice, advice. we've been able to bring to, to Ghana and to all Ghana. of them are processing the beans yeah. into liquor and butter. Yeah. And then exporting them the, 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 the liquor. Because if you export, you get about eight times what you sell here. The worth than just selling the Raw beans. I mean, the, if you add value, yeah. you attract a lot more because the co cocoa butter is the most expensive in, uh, raw material. All right. And the co cocoa beans contains about 55% fat. Yeah. And that is the cocoa butter. Okay. So, in terms of processing, I mean, You've I've done, I've done so a much. lot. Yeah. I've trained all, almost all the quality assurance managers. Uh, <laughs> processing managers, processing directors in most of the industries have been my students I've trained at the University of Ghana. Part of many nations. And uh, BSc, <laughs> Masters, PhD. PhD. I've trained many, many, many guys in the industry. Okay. And they are doing a lot to help the nation. All now, right. the challenge we have now is with the cocoa production. Okay. And that is emanating largely from climate change. Because cocoa is weather and climate sensitive. Mm -hmm. So there is an amount of sunshine that it deserves before it will produce good quality beans for you. And there is also an amount of rainfall on an annual basis that it must also get yeah. to produce good beans for you. Yeah. But then due to climate change, there is a whole lot of changes season when the rain is supposed to fall when, and, 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 and a lot. So the challenges being faced is likely being faced at the production level. And that is why the volumes have come down a little bit. It has not just come down, it increased because we used to produce just about 200,000 yeah, met, metric tons and then we increased to 300, 400, 500, 600 and then under President Kufo we were able to hit 1 million metric tons. Then it went down again to about 600 and then it, it, it started increasing again and then to 2021 we hit 1 million again and now it's come down to about 850,000. So, yeah, so yeah, if you look at the trends, it has actually increased over time, in, in, increased drastically yeah. over time. But in current terms, in the past two years, there has been some reduction. Downs, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. right. And okay. I believe that your yeah, government is, is, is aware of this, and they are doing everything so possible to ensure that they help right. address by supporting cocoa farmers. And okay. also encourage young men like mm -hmm. you and I to, to go, go into, into farming, cocoa farming. Co 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 farming. <laughs> All right. So My you can school, be an expert in uh, what, uh, computer science or whatever, and then still have a farm. Yeah. 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 All right. So I, I think we'll take that. He was asking it. It has been a blessing. Or yeah. So, so <laughs> <laughs> everything that happens don't happen by chance. So I take it that it's a blessing because all my father had 18 kids. All my elder brothers who were raised when he was very rich, none of them was able to enter university. So there was a very high possibility that if my father were to be rich at that time when I had to enter secondary school, I would have had a, a, a blockhead yeah. that uh, oh, the father is rich. And, and, and at that time, yeah. uh, kids from Bruno, we're coming to him for help. Bruno parents who were rich yeah. were not going to school. Why? Because they thought their parents are rich. So they would just go to school and play and 
it, it, now, it, it has changed because of education. It, it has changed. But, but in the past, they were not like going that. to school. Mm -hmm. So you will just learn a trade after uh, uh, school and then yeah. it, it, it begins to earn money and it thinks that is okay life. So I might not have studied to this higher height if my father were to be rich yeah. and, and continued to, to be rich at that time. So I see it as a blessing. A blessing. Great. Okay. SRC president, you can go. Okay. Um, thank you so much, um, Prof. Vice Chancellor. I think today has been a blessing and over my four years in GCTO, this is actually the first time such an occasion has happened on campus, bridging the gap between the vice chancellor and students, and I'm very happy. <laughs> and um, look, I'm listening to you, I think we, we're all inspired with the fact that you persevered, time management, regardless of the you know, flaws within the past time, um, you still went through to you know, progress and all that. But as a student advocate and a leader, I want to, this is not actually even a question, but I want to chance on this opportunity to, to look for opportunities for students. And I was listening to you and I heard scholarships, scholarships, scholarships. Yeah, I was sure. like, it's, it's, this is very great. So I'm just requesting whether, since you've gotten the opportunity and it doesn't happen normally at the time, if you could grace us with about four scholarships today. Uh, yes. <laughs> You, at least you, you, you grace up with, I think, two or three scholarships for students on GCTU campus. Yeah, okay. Yes. So now, um, thank you very much. Yeah, because I went through education with scholarship, one of the things I do is to ensure that I support people's education. Perfect. If you go to, to my town, I have students in this university I'm taking care of who are not my kids. I pay their school fees every God year. There are students in other universities at the start of every academic year. I have students, about 40 students, wow. that have given scholarship that have paid their fees in full. I pay about 100,000 Ghana cities cash every start of every year for others. And I look for scholarship Thank opportunities you. for others. And, and there are so, so in total, I have about 100 list of, of, of students sure, all around man. the world. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of. Yeah, that's and, really and, good. And at, at least supporting. Okay. And yeah, likewise. So, and that's why I'm, 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 I'm so much about scholarships uh, going around the world, <laughs> getting for scholarship for our, our staff, uh, because yeah, I want to help. Because you're a testament of it. Very good. Yeah. I, 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 I have a benefit yeah, of, of, of this kind of, of, of opportunities. opportunities. So I need to create such opportunities for others, others also to also, enjoy. To also have, have a better life. In, in, in future. Thank so, there's a scholarship scheme that I, I, I said we have initiated. Management signed agreement with various universities in, in Africa. And I mentioned that we have agreement with University of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. We have agreement with University of KwaZulu-Natal. Yeah. We have agreement with Durban University of uh, Technology. Durban, that's of and then yeah. other universities. And, and at this agreement, we are supposed to have staff exchange and we are supposed to send students to these various institutions at the master's and the PhD levels at no fee. Wow. So some of your lecturers have been enrolled onto yeah. some of these programs and are pursuing their PhD. And as I said, I'm now introducing the mentorship program where at the end of every year, every head of department is supposed to pick brilliant students who want to teach like i decided to lecture yeah. you want to be a lecturer whether in computer science computer engineering it uh, logistics yes. uh, finance accounting whatever you want to lecture and you have brains to study we will give you full scholarship to enroll you with your masters in one of these universities wow. and then we won't send you but then your fees is taken care of so we can engage you here as a teaching assistant working with us whilst we give you some allowance okay. for you to complete your master's, you'll finish, and then you go again for, for your PhD. PhD. Then after that, we enroll you as a lecturer. Okay. We've started such agreement with uh, 
University of KwaZulu Natal, they have a computer science department with IT, mm -hmm. and they said that they don't get too many students in South Africa at that higher level. Okay. At the master's and PhD level, they, they get in, in many international students. Mm. So they are, they are finding it difficult to get lecturers, okay. South Africans, lecturers in that field. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we started this mentorship program so that when you complete, you can either become a lecturer here at DCTU or you can either become a lecturer there. at other University of Johannesburg or University of KwaZulu Natal in Durban. Okay. And we have an agreement to mentor students into Great. A, 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 Great. academia. Great. So, for what you asked for, um, I thought through that we, we, we needed to start because we used to have the president scholarship that at the, end, at, at the beginning of every year, every year we give yeah. about 10 scholarship to okay. students okay. who do not pay fees right. but you should be enrolled with us and then after you enroll we just select 10 needy students okay. and then we award them scholarships mm -hmm. so it's, 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 it's an initiative we're going to start and I, I, I believe that by the next academic year, I, I would have started that and I'll give the first 10 scholarships okay. to the next year, first years, and then it continues, right? Okay, it. thank you very much, Prop. There's a question from, I, I think it deserves a round of applause, or? <laughs> so we have this question from social media, I think it's Facebook, from Benjamin Zometi. He says, Prof, with your expertise, what do you have on the table for GCTU as a technology school? That is Thank the you. biggest question. And for me, that is my greatest dream. <laughs> my greatest dream for this institution is to create a Silicon Valley for Ghana. <laughs> so if I say creating a Silicon Valley, we say we are creating that the the most advanced, advanced technological hub yeah. as an institution yeah. for Ghana. So we will be the institution, the best ICT university in, in Ghana. Ghana. Already we are. It's attainable. <laughs> in terms of ICT. And that is why, if you can see, we have developed many more programs in this area. Uh, we just used to run computer science and uh, computer engineering. But now we have added on uh, uh, data science, analytics, cyber security, uh, web applications, and, and many, many others. Because we have been given a mandate to be a institution of call when it comes to ICT in Ghana, to develop the human capital needs in ICT for Ghana. So we are an ICT university. Yeah. And therefore, the vision we have as an institution is to create the highest technological hub. Uh -huh. So this year, if you listen to I'm, I'm, I'm a speech I made, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to create more labs uh, for IT, computer science, wow. computer and, and engineering. And then we, we are creating another big lab here on the top floor. Okay. And that will be called the Center for Innovations, Technology Skills Development and Entrepreneurship Training. And we are setting up about 120 computers with intelligent boards, world-class lab. That we will bring some of you there to train you with your innovations, yeah. with your ideas. Mm -hmm. We want to build an app, okay. software, and things. We have the equipment, we have facility for robotics, AI, and oh, then we will be the institution of call to train organizations in Ghana that is good. in the area of IT. So that we ground them our stand as the best ICT university in Ghana mm -hmm. and not of the whole West Africa. And that's our vision. And we have already planned this institution to be built with eight, six to eight stories everywhere. If you want to see how this institution is going to be in the next decade, go to our new reception. Yes. How many of you have been there? Yeah, I've seen it. Have you seen it? Yes, I have seen it. It's impressive. I like it. <laughs> In the next 
Ten years. That's how the university is going to be. It will be like working in Harvard. If you enter, you will appear like you are working in MIT yeah. and huh? any of the higher institutions in, in, America. in America. And we have we've started. We have structured all, all the buildings. Mm -hmm. And we are building the first eight story now. So if you enter the gates on your right side, mm -hmm. it's an eight story. And that's the first block. If, if, this year, we're going to start another, a, a new hostel, another eight story at the back of the in, in, infirmary. Mm -hmm. There's a space there. We're going to build another eight story there. And that will take about 1,200 students. And then we'll, after that, we'll break block B and block C. And we'll build two eight stories wow. here. Eight stories. And then we'll build another six, six story. If you enter out of this hall on the wall, we'll build another six story. Wow. We'll break down Faculty of Engineering. We'll break down the whole structure and build another six story there eventually. And then we're going to build another a, a big auditorium where that open space in front of the cafeteria. Yeah, yeah block A in front of that space. There's a plan for auditorium. Mm -hmm. Big auditorium. That can take about 1,500 students. Wow. Wow. The vision is big. And I can assure you, the vision is big. It's big. But it's achievable because yes, we have started it. it. Mm -hmm. As uh, <laughs> Mr. Kogas Abwa said, if you had entered this institution five years ago and you enter here now, you can it's understand different. that the vision is Thank achievable. You. Thank because you the change the has already started. Yeah, the institution has changed completely in the past few years. It has changed the face of the university and it's going to change continuously because the first A story is coming up and all the other A stories will come one after the other. And by a decade, when all these buildings are built, this will be the most expensive institution in Ghana and you will be proud that you were a student here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, it's, it's been so... I, 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 I don't know. I'm so intrigued. I don't know what to say. It's been a learning curve for me, and, uh, and I hope it's been a learning curve for you as well. He's taught us so many things from endurance, perseverance, time management, saving, planning, everything. If I were you, or if you are me, I think we should take all of these things into consideration in our path, in choosing our careers, in, in our work, in our daily lives, to be better people and to send the, the, the message of GC to you outside of this gate. The vision is big, it's enormous, but like he said, it's attainable. And it's not one person's job. It is his job, it is your lecturer's job, is the students our job is everybody's job to make it happen so let's in one accord be together learn as we are supposed to make the grades and go out there shine for our school to also shine thank you very much for a great evening my name is magdalene williams i did this with professor emmanuel ohene of and, and then before we close yes. i want to appreciate my staff of course because, as please see, go ahead Things are changing, and they are also changing. And I want to appreciate the first. Thank you so much for all your contributions. And management team, the professor, pro privacy, registrar, director, finance, audit. I mean, everybody working hard to ensure that we are able to achieve their dream. And I believe that students as well, you also have a role. Now, as you can see, the tables and chairs in your lecture rooms they've changed yeah yeah you have know. to maintain them because we are buying them with money we want to make sure that the old stock is away and the new ones will come when the new ones come please let's keep them well because we want to give you better learning environment and very soon we're going to change the library we're going to change. everything will change so please as we continue changing making this place a better place let us keep what we have and maintain them so well that tomorrow your son will also be able to come when yes, your you son, are an your alumni. Children.
to be able to study an abyss environment. Thank you very well, much. So, uh, him, uh, him, the him hasn't come. <laughs> the him, we, we really need the him to come. Yes. Oh, you want a him? Yes, the him, the him. The, <laughs> all of us are asking. We are asking for uh, the him. So, please, please, <laughs> we are all asking. <laughs> Yes, I, okay. <laughs> Just one. We we might join you if we know how there's, to sing. There's it. a particular hymn that is, is is so has been so important to me, my okay. family, and 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 it's like um it 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 it, it, it can't escape. It, 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 it's like everything you do. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself whether what you are doing is it the tree, the tree one? Yeah, the tree one. Um, Asembi, Asembi, Aramekano, Adibi, Arami. So obey my Someone should give us a vote of thanks, no? Can I select? You have someone. Okay, all right. So the person can just come and then do that while right, so, we wait. All right. So thank you once again to our vice chancellor. Let's just give it up for him, <laughs> Professor <laughs> Emmanuel. <laughs> and an amazing job by our host. Thank you very much for an amazing job. She really made it special, didn't she? Let's give it up for her as well. A blow when early received, a blow which is inevitably yours, when early received, extricates you from all hostilities. Yours, when early received, extricates you from all hostilities. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not an excuse to go and beat people up. Don't procrastinate yes. sleep less yes. someone who went from five pesos a day to three thousand six hundred pounds a month if that doesn't expire you i don't know what will you can make it all the challenges that he went through he overcame them there were no excuses he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth he is where he is today through hard work hard work you're not all intelligent as he is, but hard work will get you there. Let's give it up for him once more. Thank you very much. All right, so we are now going to show our appreciation to our vice chancellor. We actually can't show it enough, but we want to symbolize it today. And we have an opportunity. Our SRC is going to give a presentation, but before that, we have Miss Jaloni, Clue Jackson, BC Level 300 student, and she's going to give us the vote of thanks today. Thank you, Jaloni. Please join me. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, Pro Vice Chancellor, the Dean of Students, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members, and dear students, all protocol observed. Vous devez convenir avec moi. Que la gratitude n'est pas seulement la plus grande de vertu, mais la mère de toutes les autres. In simple words, you must agree with me that gratitude is not the greatest of virtues, but it's the presence, sorry, the parent of all others. On behalf of the entire student body and GCTU, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for gracing this occasion with your presence, time with the Vice-Chancellor. 
We are deeply honored to have the privilege of listening to the remarkable life story of our esteemed Vice Chancellor, Professor Emmanuel Ohene Afwakwa. His journey from humble beginnings to the pinnacle of academic leadership serves as an inspiration to us all. We are reminded of the invaluable support and guidance that have propelled you to this height, sir. As the Akan proverb wisely states, meaning a good parent applies wisdom and knowledge to train his children. You have, through your wise counsel and your experiences as our father, uncle, and vice chancellor, imbibe us with wisdom and knowledge. These insights have left an indelible mark on our hearts and our mind, and we are forever grateful for your dedication. Your unwavering commitment to excellence, coupled with unwavering, serves as a beacon of hope to us all. As we depart from this seminar, let us carry with us lessons learned and the inspiration gained. Let us strive to emulate the exemplary leadership and dedication demonstrated by our Vice Chancellor in all our endeavors. Once again, I extend my sincere thanks to the Vice Chancellor, as well as all the organizers, sponsors, and attendees who have made this seminar a resounding success. May we continue to strive for greatness, guided by the wisdom shared with us today. He forgot one part of my name. My middle name is Najoko, so I'll leave you with a gun note. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Crew Jackson, for that eloquently and articulately delivered vote of thanks. She said it all. We are grateful. We appreciate you. And we are going to make sure that we follow your example. Someone was telling me, a final year student, that he wants to reapply. Because he wants to see all the things and experience all the things. That, and he will come and do his master's, as he said, in his PhD afterwards. Thank you very much. Now I invite the SRC executives. They want to also show their appreciation. So please, Mr. President. Hello, good evening. So, um, I think a lot has been said here. And before I even um, begin with what we came here to do, I'd like to share like some 30 second story with you. When I came to GCTU, what actually inspired me to become SRC president was two things. I had um, a classmate of mine who we sat in the same class in St. Augustine's College, who was then the vice president when I came to level 100. Yes, yeah, so I'm an Abstunian. And when, when, when I met him, he, he said something to me. He was like, the vice chancellor of this school is also an Absonian. So if you really want to meet him one-on-one, -on -one, strive hard, work hard, make an impact, and become the SRC president. So I told myself, the only way I can meet the vice chancellor is to make an impact to students, advocate, work hard. And one day, when my work actually, you know, reflects in whatever that I'm doing, I'll get the opportunity to meet the vice chancellor. Today, here am I, with my, together with my executives, coming to present a plaque and a citation to the vice chancellor. Trust me, when I came 2021 to GCTU, the forecourt was full of, it was sand, like sandy. When we are having this Aquaba weekend, all that, when we are done, you see that your shoes are dirty. And you go back and someone asks, where did you go? You told the person I went to um, a program in the university. Like, ah, university now called and I FEC. And trust me, it was during that tenor, during that time, that the vice chancellor um, was actually, um, that, that was the first time, we, um, the first time we became there. We got the government right, that was the 2021, when he became our vice chancellor. The first thing he did was he laid pavement blocks from that from the uh, entrance to the forecourt and today it has been one of the the attracting centers where people come in 
to um, rent and do their occasions and all that. And today I can come to any occasion and I go back to how I was without my shoes getting dirty. Aside that, he has renovated the, uh, what's the name? This block. First, this block wasn't how you are seeing it. All. <laughs> he has renovated it. Right now, go to where the reception is. Just this Friday, we went there to actually commission the place. Trust me, it's like Harvard. See, we have a vice chancellor who is working 247. You know, <laughs> I can't even say it all. He is doing a lot. And like he said, we have a strategic plan, a developmental plan for the next 10 years. And trust me, if you want to see it all, go to the reception and you'll see everything. It is there. In the next 10 years, eh, I'm, I'm feeling sad that I wouldn't be the SRC president then. The SRC president then in the next 10 years, Charlie, will have a lot to say. So thank you, Prof. Vice Chancellor, Professor Imano Ohenia Fuakwa. The SRC is much grateful for over the years, the good work that you've put in. And we couldn't just come to this occasion and leave without actually appreciating the good work that you've been doing. So together with my executives and together as a student at large, we actually... Um, Okay, so my vice president is drawing my attention to something. I will present the plaque to the vice chancellor, and my vice president here will present the citation to the vice chancellor. So today I have, I have a plaque here to show um, our appreciation and actually the good work that the vice chancellor has been doing over the years in this institution um, to him. It's our, an award of excellence and honor from GCTUS South and student at large. Um, Vice Chancellor Imano, Professor, Professor Imano Henny Afwakwa, we are really grateful and we would like to present this flag to you. So I'm going to read what's on the citation. So your commitment to excellence is truly commendable and has not gone unnoticed. Your dedication, hard work, and attention to detail have consistently raised the bar and inspired the Student Representative Council. Your contributions have been instrumental in achieving our goals and your passion for excellence sets a high standard for all of us to follow. Thank you for your outstanding efforts and for being a true example of excellence in everything you do. Please, before we sit down, let us all be out, upstanding eh? and let's appreciate him. Let's stand. Let's stand and appreciate him. Thank you so much. So we'll continue standing. Um, we'll have our closing prayer from Master Kostiv. Kostiv, is he here? Kostiv, please come and give us a closing prayer. And then we will usher out management. And then the students will follow. So please, closing prayer from Kostiv. Thank you very much. We are praying. We thank you, our gracious and everlasting Father, for a day like this. We pray and we thank you for the successful completion of this occasion. We thank you for the life of our Vice Chancellor. We pray and we ask that whatever knowledge, counsel, and wisdom we've achieved here, Father, you help us implement it in our various lives and at the end, glory and honor will be given to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Thank you very much. So please, we'll let um, management, please, um, there's a refreshments in G6, so you are all invited to that. We'll let management please leave, take the lead, and then the rest will follow. I want to also take the time to thank you all for coming. I want to thank um, the Dean of Student Affairs and his office, Professor Uso Akumia, for such a wonderful program, for putting this together. We appreciate you all so much for making this a success, because without you, 
this wouldn't have been a success. So thank you very much. All the students are please reminded, I think the final year students are reminded that there is an exit seminar program on Monday. Um, you've been given the details, so on Monday, please make sure that you keep your schedules open. Um, there's a very important program for you all. Thank you once again. We appreciate